Hello, and welcome back to my channel. Why am I under the covers like a eight-year-old, you ask? Because today we are reading spooky middle grade horrors. <laughs> um, it's really hot under here, oh my gosh. And you know what? I thought, what better way to introduce us to spooky middle grade horrors than under the blankets with a flashlight, like you're a kid and you're like reading. I don't have the books, I'm listening to audiobooks. You know, this was just me being extra, but like <laughs> you're a kid and you're reading the, the pages under your blankets your parents don't see. That is the vibe we are going for under here. So I will be reading two books in this vlog, okay? Let's just, you know, wrap this around to me. <laughs> I will be reading two spooky books in this vlog. The first one is Small Spaces by Katherine Arden. I know nothing about this book, literally nothing. I always hear this one talked about when discussing horror middle grades. So I had to put it on this list, that's all. And then with the other one, we will be reading City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab. Now it has ghosts in the title. It has to be spooky, right? It has to be full of like ghosts and ghost stories and magical fun. There's no way that that one's not spooky, right? <laughs> I'm going in really blindly into these as someone who doesn't really read middle grade often, but I have loved a couple middle grades. I am scared, hopeful, and excited all at once because I'm ready to love a spooky middle grade horror. I mean, I think sometimes middle grade horror is scarier than real adult stuff. Like, Coraline is terrifying. And isn't that middle grade? You know what? So here I am to see if I'm right. That middle grade is absolutely terrifying and then I'm going to not be able to sleep at night if I was eight. Welcome to a vlog. Let's get right into reading. Hello, uh, I figured it's time for a little bit of an update. I haven't updated you at all. I'm in about 50% into small spaces. The reason I haven't really updated you is I don't really have a lot of thoughts on it. And I think this comes from the fact that it's hard for me sometimes to read and review middle grade. I don't know why I thought this vlog was a good idea when I started it because of that. I just am no, I'm not the target audience. And I know like sometimes I think it's hard to like criticize and review a book that I know I probably won't love and adore. I had higher hopes because I mean, I've never read a middle grade horror, but like Coraline is spooky. Uh, when I watched the movie, so I did have a little bit of high hopes for like some spookier reads. Um, this one I have, I think I finally hit the point where it is spooky. We just like got off the bus if you've read it and I am liking where the book is going so I think I will like the last half but the first half is a very slow setup in my opinion and it doesn't lead me to where we are. Like the beginning of the book does not lead me to spooky scarecrows. And I'm very confused how we got there. Did I miss something? What's going on? Yeah. I think having read Catherine Arden before, I was expecting a lot more atmosphere in this than I, than you get. Obviously I read a fantasy by Catherine Arden and this is a middle grade horror. That was an adult fantasy, but like I felt like the atmospheric writing that you get in The Bear and the Nightingale would have been beautiful as a middle grade horror. Um, obviously like changed a little bit, but I was still expecting a lot more atmosphere than there is. This actually feels like very to the point and it does have that similar style where like you're less connected the way I felt in Bear and the Nightingale. I just can't connect to anything. I do like the friendship that's happening in this book and I think that it's going to be great for friendship and with middle grade books like a message about friendship is always always great so I am enjoying that but honestly I think I've read fantasy books that are spookier than this I think I've read middle grade fantasy that are spookier than this so I'm intrigued to see if it continues to go and if it's spooky yeah but I will say that I unintentionally showed up to uh the corn maze because I have a photo shoot here tonight so I'm at the Edmonton corn maze and I just thought it was funny because I had no idea we were gonna have spooky scarecrows and now I'm at the corn maze and that was like meant to be I guess not that you guys will get any content from the corn maze because I'm here on work not like I won't have the ability to like vlog anything but I definitely thought that was just like funny that they're spooky scarecrows and I'm at a corn maze where like scarecrows exist scarecrows are creepy I will say like even on their own they are creepy so We'll see where this goes. Uh, I'll let you know. I didn't have a lot of thoughts, so see you later. I 
I finished the book. I finished Small Spaces and I didn't love it. I didn't hate it either. Uh, for a middle grade book, like, it was enjoyable, but was it spooky even as a middle grade book? I don't really think so. I've, I said before, I have read fantasy books scarier than this, like middle grade fantasy. I honestly think Amari is more terrifying this at times. I think what makes a book scary for me, what makes a book spooky for me, is the stakes of a book. I need to believe that there's stakes I, I need to believe that there's stakes. In horror book, in adult books, that's, I need to believe that they might die. In middle grade books, I just, that's sometimes just a little bit of suspense, a little bit of, they might make the wrong turn a couple times and get into a spookier situation, a situation that would be a little bit tougher to get out of. Like, obviously in a middle grade book, we know that they're all gonna survive in the end, so that there's not that stake there. In this book, I think, probably my biggest issue was what the heck was this watch if you've read this book you know that there's a watch and this watch just gets her out of every situation it leads her exactly where she needs to go and i just it took away the stakes oh she can just look down at her watch and know if she's going the right way if she's doing the right thing like there was no stakes in it that sucked I really, really wanted to enjoy this. I actually was looking at reviews and there's a lot of people who also didn't enjoy The Bear and the Nightingale, didn't enjoy this. I do think it might be a Catherine Arden writing style for me because I also felt like there wasn't really much stakes in The Bear and the Nightingale. I think it's just the way that they write, the way she writes is a little bit just storyteller and hopeful and it's just, yeah. I, I don't I don't think I'm going to continue this series although Mel told me that the first book is the least spooky out of all of them and I do think we got some decent setup that there could be some spookier books. I'm still really confused where the scarecrows come from. Like I get that the scarecrows are the whole plot device, they're on the cover and the cover is actually beautiful but I just feel like they came out of nowhere like all of a sudden we had scarecrows chasing us and there was no setup for the scarecrows. I much preferred the ghosts. Like why didn't we have spooky ghosts chasing us? I get it because it had to be, you know, it had to be their friends turned into scarecrows. But the first half of this book is all about ghosts so I was very confused the lack of ghosts in the later half. I don't know. I just, I felt like this was a, a mediocre read. Maybe a younger side of middle grade would find it horror and like, I mean, I, I, I don't think that my little cousin would enjoy it because I do think he'd be scared. So I guess it is scary in some way, but I just, you know what? I was expecting like Coraline, like spooky. Like Coraline is spooky. Or just like some, some, like this just felt like a fun Halloween book more to me than a horror book. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making any sense. I really hate criticizing middle grade as a 25 year old who reads adult books, but I have read middle grade that I have enjoyed and has had great depth. I don't think that just because a book is middle grade that can call for lazy writing. I think that there are incredible middle grade books that have lots of definition to them, that have lots of setup to the plot. Obviously it's accessible writing and it's not like hundreds of pages of world building or setup, but I have read incredible middle grade that do set up. I think the Warrior Cat books have more setup than this book. You know, like I, I I just, I don't think that's an excuse. And maybe I'm just a little too harsh of a critic. I will not be rating this book on Goodreads. It will go as marked as read on Goodreads, but I'm not gonna give it a star rating. But for all of you here, just because, I don't know, I just, I know I'm not the target audience for this. So as a fact that I didn't love it, I feel like I just shouldn't, shouldn't rate it. I don't know but I did love Amari. Like, I can love middle grade. I don't know. Tell me in the comments down below if you think that I should rate it or not rate it. I'll leave it blank until this video comes out and then I can give it a star rating if people tell me that I should. Because, I mean, if you look through the ratings on Goodreads, they're all, like, there's no kids rating on Goodread. Goodreads. Does that make sense? Like, no kids are rating on Goodreads. And I do think that if I were to suggest this book, it is just a three-star read for me. Like, when I recommended Amari to my little cousin, I was like, this is amazing, this is incredible. When I recommended the uh, Polar Bears Explorer Club, I was like, I really enjoyed this book, it's a fun time. It's, and that was a three star for me. Like, it was just a fun time. There's nothing like really in depth for it, you know? Or when I recommended Fable Haven, I was like, there's so much intricate plot, like, this is a five star, like, read it. But like, I don't know, like, I do feel like this was just still a mediocre read for me regardless. I think my little my little cousins would enjoy it, but like not in the way that they were obsessed with Amari or not in the way that I was obsessed with Fablehaven when I was younger.
editing Castier because I kind of forgot to say um, I'm editing this like right after I filmed it. I also wanted a little bit more small spaces to matter. I wanted them to hide a little bit more. I wanted the concept of these small spaces and not be able to reach them happen. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, I feel like we got very little of that and it's literally called Small Spaces. Let's get on to updating you on the next book because I've actually already read a little bit of City Ghost at this moment in time. So let's... I'm already enjoying this book way more than the last one. This one, although I don't necessarily think at this moment in time is spooky in terms of like scares and Halloween, there's so much ghosties, like ghosties everywhere. Like she literally sees ghosts. I'm really enjoying the writing style of this way more than I enjoyed the writing style of Small Spaces. So I do think that it is a, a me and Catherine Arden, we do not get along. I have read V.E. Schwab before and I have adored V.E. Schwab before. I love the villains duology, like loved it. That's all I've read from her. Uh, I won't read her more whimsical books, but I do have Darker Shades of Magic on my bookshelf to read one day. But yeah, I, I, I just, I enjoy Schwab's writing style in this. I enjoy the way that it's middle grade, but like so many ghosties. And yeah, that's all I have to say right now. There's nothing real to update you on. I probably will be living in this shirt because I literally just bought it. I went to the Halloween store and it says um, horror movies and chill on it and it's got Scream, so. You know, I'm trying to get my spooky fall vibes up and about. I think there's a pumpkin up here that you literally can't see. I'm blocking the pumpkin, but I do have a pumpkin up there. Should I like sit back here so you can see all my decor? Hello, I have finished the book. So we're gonna talk about the book. But before we talk about the book, we're gonna do some apple bobbing because what better way to celebrate fall as a child as some apple popping. You know, middle grade books, middle grade activities. I'm really like a crazy person when I do this. I probably should've got a towel. I'm not ready. Oh my God. I've never apple popped before. I feel like you should have a bigger bucket. It's gonna be hard enough. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> what that mouth do? Oh my God. <laughs> Open those fucking piranha jaws up. This is the smallest one over here. I'm saying, I feel like you need like crab apple size. Oh my gosh. How is this a fun kid activity? I thought you were supposed to blindfold yourself. Well, my eyes are closed. Well, that's. I can't do it anyways. Don't need to make it harder. <laughs> that is the most disgusting face I've ever seen in my life. Okay, you have to put it down and keep going. Here's a timer. You're supposed to like time yourself and see how many you can get. I have to do more? That's, just, a, that's what was, apple bobbing is. I was you're, just doing the one. You're supposed to see how many you can get in like a minute or two. Well, start me a timer. We can redo it. We can do it. We can do the last three. How many can I do in a minute? <laughs> Whose idea was this? How anyways? much do you want? A minute. Give me a minute. Three. Two, one. Oh, it's not focusing. It's not focusing. <laughs> you have to put it down with your hand, your mouth. You can't fucking. What? That's the whole point. You can't use it all. That was 17 seconds. That was it. great. I, once I get the first one, I got the skill. You need to have a competition on who could do it faster. Are you going to do it now? Well, you had practice and you cheated. Used your hands. You can use your hands too. I've never apple bobbed before. Who makes these rules? I still need to talk about the book. Um, maybe I'll come back to talk to you about the book once I've cleaned up a little bit from my affair. I'm gonna practice, practice one. one. It's hard. Gross, I just spit in the bowl. Oh, there's probably a lot of my spit in the bowl. <laughs> Vacuum <coughs> Very well. Did you pin it against the bottom? That's cheating. That's why I'm saying we should get a big bucket, because then you can't pin it against the bottom. That's 
Yes. How else are you supposed to get it? Like, <laughs> tell me how you're gonna get it. It's like saying I'm just gonna like just scoop it out the side. Is that what you're supposed to do? Is pin it against the bottom? How else are you supposed to get it? You just, just literally spit. spit. <laughs> you're not gonna eat these apples after. I was not planning on it. I can't see. I got apple coming. <laughs> Okay, you ready to see how fast you can do it? I guess so. On your marks, get set, go. I can't be <laughs> Safe to say you did it faster than I did. I did feel Cause you did all four and you're at 43 seconds left. Look at so about 17 seconds. <laughs> Hi, um, I got some new fall decor, which is actually kind of funny because I'm not sure whether to tell you guys or show you my hauls in these vlogs just because by the time this vlog comes out, you've actually probably seen so many videos with like this setup and these decors in it. Like, But I have to say like, look how cute these little candles are. It's a little ghosty and a pumpkin and they smell so strong. They're like toasted vanilla and it's, um, it's really good. And then like a little bit of fake garland and I have like a bunch more stuff coming but when this video goes live I'll have had this like set up for a while now so it's just like weird do I show you it or do I not show you it but anyways I needed to give you an update on City of Ghosts I left you hanging we went apple bobbing and it's been a couple days and I did not update you on the book so here I am City of Ghosts, I actually really did enjoy. I gave this one a high three stars. It, it was just fun. I just had a good time with City of Ghosts and I could see as a middle grade reader during spooky season really enjoying this. I would probably say it's not horror. I don't really get why people put it on the horror recommendation list and all of that fun stuff. Like even for a middle grade it's, it's just not horror. I think the last one was horror. Now that I've read this one, I was like, oh yeah, small spaces could be horror. But City of Ghosts was paranormal middle grade. I did not see the horror elements. There was ghosts. There was just ghosts, which made it a perfect spooky season read, but it was not horrifying. Uh, but I did have chills. I did really, really enjoy it. It did set the atmosphere really well. I really enjoy V.E. Schwab's writing style in, in it. Uh, I have read and enjoyed V.E. Schwab before, so this was just like a, another book of hers that I could enjoy. It made me a little bit more excited to try more of hers. I'm sitting on a darker shade of magic. It stares at me all the time and I do need to get to that, but I did enjoy and thoroughly love and adore the villain's duology by her. So fingers crossed that I will like a darker shade of magic. Addie and Gallant are, are not my, my cup of tea, so I'll be avoiding them. But after reading City of Ghosts, I think I have my hopes a little bit higher for darker shade of magic again. Anyways, I don't really have much to say about this book, besides that it's really weird to read a book with a character that has your own name. Obviously, our main character's name is Cassidy Blake, and every time the word Cassidy was said, I was like, wait, who, what, who, who needs me? And I feel really sorry for anyone who has a very common name and a commonly used name in books, because how do you read books with your name in it without it, like, taking you out of the story? I don't know how people do it. Yeah, I, I definitely would be avoiding Cassidy stories if I, if I can in the future. Cause it was just weird. It was just weird. I think maybe if I read it, it would be different, but I was listening to it as an audiobook, so I was actually hearing my name out loud and actively like, what? What? What did I miss? Someone tell me? Other than that, I have no real critiques about this book. It was just a fun time. I really enjoyed this setup. I think there was a lot of world building and a lot of lore. It's more of a fantasy book than horror, as I said, and I definitely would continue this. If I'm feeling in the mood for another middle grade at some point in time, I would 100% pick the next one up. It was it was quick, it was easy, and if you're just looking for a story full of ghosts and an adventure and a story about friendship, as middle grade goes, it's another book about friendship, and I really, really enjoyed the friendship and the ideas in it, and I definitely will be recommending this series to my little cousins and nephews. This one was a big hit with me. I know I technically gave both books three stars in here, but I think one was more enjoyable than the other, and I just don't adore middle grade often, so three stars are typically what they get. I have nothing else to say. I'm gonna end this vlog. Thank you so much for joining me in this trying middle grade spooky books, horror books, and you know, I thought this was something a little bit different to break up the fall fantasy vibes and the Halloween horror vibes. 
vibes, a uh, little bit of a light horror, light spookiness, and plus I know a lot of people, a lot of adults love middle grade, and here are my thoughts on a couple of the, a couple ones that I, I enjoy to someone who doesn't actively enjoy middle grade. Anyways, I will catch you on the flip side. If, if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me emoji just to say you were here, leave me a little ghosty emoji. We got a little ghosty right here, we got a little ghosty in the story, and if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my books around, my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon, all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day. <laughs>